In spring of 2022, the University of North Dakota ran its 11th Space Analog Mission in its inflatable Lunar Mars Analog Habitat. Four crew members spent 21 days inside the structure, designed to simulate living and conducting experiments on the Moon or Mars. The focus of this mission was on cognitive decay in long-duration spaceflight, and the primary research project involved flying drones while wearing an EEG cap. On our last full day in the habitat, we recorded a tour of this small building in which we had been living for the past three weeks. Come on into the core module. Uh, this is the habitation quarters for all the crew. It's the biggest module. Um, it was the first built module, actually, so I'm told. These are the bunks. There's four of them. Here we have the breaker, which is where you control the power to everything. The water heater, which unfortunately for us uh, only started working two thirds of the way through the mission, so we did not have hot water the entire time, but we persevered. Um, some cleaning equipment. Um, and so here, if you want to get inside, this is my bunk. Um, and you can see how tight it is. So these, these are all crammed together. As you can see, there's one here, one here, um, and then two more on either side here. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, these walls are not, not very thick either. So some of the difficulties of, of these close living quarters and these very tight areas is, well, if you're claustrophobic, this is not a place uh, you would thrive. Also, in my personal experience, I'm not, I'm not a light sleeper at all, but you can hear virtually everything. So people being, you know, you have to work together <laughs> to get to bed because if anyone's making noise, it's not, not really going to happen. Um, <clears throat> here's our kitchen, which is a, a bit messy right now, but our sink. Uh, as far as cooking uh, things that we can use to cook, we have a microwave. We have the coffee maker, we have a toaster oven, um, we have a hot plate over here. Um, this is of course our refrigerator. Um, and our water cooler. You can also do hot water. We, we, so we didn't have hot water two thirds of the mission. For half the mission, or maybe a little more, we did not have running water either. So that's why we have all these water jugs here because you know we needed water and it wasn't coming from anywhere else. So we had some, we had some, uh, some care package drops of, of water. Um, yeah. And here is just some table space for cooking and sitting and eating. Um, same here. We also have the freezer where I'd say maybe 90% of our food was considering our mission was, uh, 21 days long. We had, you know, we couldn't have a lot of fresh food, so we had to freeze a lot. This is, of course, the core module computers. And this is where we'd have the, um, this is where we check the mission chat to see what our tasks were for the, for the day to communicate with mission control. Um, on, the, on the note of communicating with mission control, uh, we also use the radio here to communicate with each other on EVA and mission control. <clears throat> um, yeah, this is also a place where we would hang out, play games, watch movies together. Um, this is everyone's module, of course. So, so this is where we spend a lot of time together. This is this is the communication app we use to talk to Mission Control. Um, it says zero seconds delay right now, but for the entirety of the mission, it was 10 minutes long. So any communica communication going out to mission control was 10 minutes, and any commu communication coming back was another 10 minutes. Um, they just turned it off here on the last day of the mission. So, so the communication delay uh, came with its difficulties, um, especially when it came to tasks. If they wanted something done quick, it was not going to happen because it took 20 minutes to... Well, it took 10 minutes to get it, and then if there was any clarification needed, it was another 10 minutes to get that uh, to get that sent to mission control, and then another 10 for them to correct the communication. So, uh, speedy speedy tasks were not were not very possible. Here's the the uh, the hygiene module, if you will. Um, this is where the toilet is and the uh, the shower. You want to get a peek at the shower bag right there? 
So that is what we used when we didn't have running water. Um, so what I did was I boiled some water on the hot plate and added some, some cooler water to it to make some, you know, shower temperature water. And you filled it in the bag and um, just let the water run out of the hose. Um, I also cleaned myself with baby wipes. Uh, wow, yeah, while we didn't have running water for a shower. In conclusion, this is the module that we all hung out in the most, uh, or hung out the most together, and this is where we spent quality time with each other. One thing we forgot to include while filming this tour is the rover. This electric vehicle is accessible through a docking port on the core module and can be used for excursions around the UND habitat property. This is also where we did most of our drone flights since there was concern that the inclement weather might damage the spacesuits. We also used the rover during an EVA mission to assist with a simulated geological sample collection mission and on some occasions just drove around for fun. Come on in to the geology module or science module as we've been calling it because none of us are geologists. Um, here we have two workstations, so two crew members for the duration of the mission primarily did most of their work here. Um, here in this module is where we workshop uh, 3D printing, um, where we post-process 3D printing, uh, where we would do some geological analysis. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of science materials available to us. We have a couple couple microscopes actually so here's one of them um, that can be connected to a laptop um, and you can also take pictures uh, it's attached to a camera um, so this is where we generally workshopped things um, here you can see some of our some of our uh, call it call it gilder garbage tech we had a lot of um, a lot of I guess you could call it garbage. Uh, a lot of PLA, a lot of 3D printing materials that went unused. So we melted them down and made them useful. Uh, these are specifically for uh, helping crew members in the space who open and close doors. This may come as no surprise, but it is actual garbage. I will need a hand. All right, nice. And back here is the 3D printer and the filament. This was also storage uh, for crew members. So as you can see, there's not a lot stored in here anymore, but there used to be toilet paper, uh, paper towels, and a lot of other consumables stored in here. Come on into the exercise module. Pretty self-explanatory. This is where the crew uh, has access to equipment to exercise, uh, which is very uh, important and necessary for long duration space travel, especially transit missions um, in microgravity because astronauts' bones start to degrade. Uh, so what's a little different is in microgravity, a lot of the equipment would be resistance based because obviously there's no gravity, so these weights wouldn't do anything. But here, uh, we have two treadmills, actually, that are both resistance-based. They don't actually, they're not mechanical or electric at all. Um, and uh, we have this elliptical-type machine, which is also body weight resistance. Um, I believe it can be used something like this. Um, and some makeshift pull-up bars that we made. So, you know, we kind of got it all in here. All, everything we need, the mats, mats for groundwork. Um, and if you come back here, this is the medic bay, which is actually our, our, crew, uh, our crew medic quarters. We actually had a doctor in here set up, so that's cool. Um, got a stretcher in case of emergency. And this is for biometric stuff. We never used it, but um, we got some plans for decor. That's the exercise module. Come on. Man. Here we got the plan production module, which is kind of uh, me and another crew member space uh, because we're the, the astrobotanists uh, per se. 
Here we have um, all the equipment you need for plant production in a controlled environment space. So you can think of this module as a little greenhouse in itself. Um, we have artificial lighting. We have some systems, some hydroponic systems we never got to implement, but there nonetheless. Um, as you can see, we got plenty of different plants. These are our recreational plants. Um, helps uh, the stu studies recently have been showing that uh, it helps the crew's mental health to have recreational plants. So here we are, green, green and happy plants. Um, but more importantly, well maybe not more importantly, but food, food is important. Here we have some some pepper and tomato plants, some basil. Uh, some baby kale over there. We have a fan that uh, we need on all the time because you know you can't just you can't just air out a module in space. You can't just open a window to cool it down or to get oxygen turnover. So especially in microgravity, uh, with no natural buoyancy buoyancy conduction, buoyancy driven conduction, um, you need. Uh, supplemental ventilation. So that's our fan, um, and that does that job for us. This is the plant production module. Come on into the EVA module. Uh, EVA stands for Extra Vehicular Activity, uh, and that is basically any time a crew member is exiting the habitat, or in other cases, exiting uh, a vehicle, um, extra vehicular. Uh, it's anytime basically a space suit is required. So in extreme environments, on a planet's surface, uh, or out in the vacuum of space. You sure this isn't a sign of alien life that you're destroying here? No, I'm like 50% sure. Um, and so this is where you prepare for EVAs and where the airlock is located in the back where a crew member would exit uh, to the Martian surface. Um, here is the computer we use to connect to EEG caps that we would put on our head during EVAs. Um, and just like any other module, this is someone's habitation space as well. Um, we have all the tools required to do various things around the habitat, uh, maintenance, repairs, uh, working on the suits, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> um, but the coolest part of the EVA module is back here, which are, of course, the spacesuits of which you exit the habitat in. Um, this orange one is affectionately referred to as tangerine, and my personal favorite is blueberry over here. Um, and so on any EVA, uh, for fidelity purposes and just for general safety, you have to take out this uh, this wagon, whatever you call it, uh, that has that has a pretty extensive um, uh, medical supplies. So this is a this is a giant med kit that crew should and would take out during every EVA. Um, knock on wood in case anything anything bad did happen. Um, so these suits are really special because <clears throat> the way you get into them is by uh, climbing on it, using this stool, getting up on this bar, doing a little, a little pull up, and dropping yourself in there. Um, it may sound simple, and it, conceptually it is, but uh, the material inside here is such that any sort of fabric on it is incredible like just has a lot of friction and it's very difficult to get in and I know a lot of crew members have struggled to to get in including myself um, so usually we have more than one person on the other side uh, making sure that the suit is is getting over the the crew member entering the suit uh, properly um, and here we also have a little, little radio that can go go in a lot of different places um, oops. That's so that um, that the that the EVA and crew member can have constant communication with what we call the IV or the intervehicular support, 
which are the crew members inside, making sure everything's going well uh, while the crew members are out on EVA on the surface. Um, what else do we have in here? <coughs> the battery. Forgot to mention the battery. Yeah, here it is. Um, so this is the battery fanny pack. You put it over your shoulder, around your waist. Make sure uh, whatever you do it's the most comfortable option for you. Um, because you put this on before you go in uh, such that it could plug into a fan here which is around here which has this really cool design um, where it can pri prior to, to some of the crew members work here uh, there was just a fan sitting here so when a crew member had to pull up and lower themselves in they really have to kind of dangle there because they can't sit down on the fan and break it but Due, due to some genius act, uh, there's this plate here that allows the fan to slide in and out now so that a crew member can sit down now here and, and make their way in. So this, uh, you put the battery on to plug in the fan to make sure that there's, to make sure that the crew member is cool, kept cool inside the suit and that there's oxygen turnover. Because uh, if there wasn't, uh, you'd get a buildup of CO2 in here and you'd probably pass out. Um, another thing you have to do before you prepare is wipe the, the viewport of the spacesuit with some Dawn soap, um, and that's to prevent fogging, uh, which the Dawn soap uh, distorts the view just a little bit, but it's definitely better than getting it fogged. And this is the EVA module. Although challenging at times, our mission in ILMA gave us a better understanding of what it might be like to live and work on another planet as well as what it's like to live in an isolated and confined environment for an extended period. Overall, it was a great time and a very worthwhile experience, and personally, I'd probably do it again if I had the chance, after some time back on Earth to recuperate, of course.